My name is Josh. I'm a nurse. I'm going to be doing a head to toe assessment on you today. Uh, can I have your name, please? My name is Mike Josh. Hey, Mike, nice to meet you. Can I have your birth date? That's 529-1989. Okay, do you know what the date is? May 1st day. Do you know where we're at? Uh, we're in the hospital. Uh, and do you know why we're here? Uh, for a physical head to toe assessment. Okay, patient is alert and oriented times four. He's sitting up appropriately, his affect is appropriate. He appears groomed, he's dressed appropriately for the season. Um, Michael, I'm going to ask you a few questions about your history, okay? Uh, oh, and I wanted to say prior to this, in the interest of saving time, I took Mike's vital signs. Blood pressure was 117 over 72. Uh, pulse was 67. Respirations were 14. Temperature was 97.8, and he reports having no pain. Um, questions about your history. Do you, have you had any uh, surgeries? No. Nope. Have you ever had any traumas? No. Nope. Okay. Do you have any medical history that you want to share with us? Not that theatrical. Okay. Um, are you on any medications? I do take Depakote for manic and I uh, take Seroquel for epilepsy. Okay. You take Depakote for manic depression, which so you do have medical history, you've been diagnosed with uh, bipolar disorder? Okay. Um, and you have sleeping issues, that's why you take the Cerebral. Okay. Um, do you have any allergies to any medications or anything else? No um, allergies to anything. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's start. I'm going to wash my hands. On some gloves. I'm going to start with your head and work my way head to toe. Um, so I'm going to be touching you kind of everywhere in between. Do you have any problem with that? No, just don't touch my feet. It's good. Okay. I'm going to start with the hair. Go ahead and tilt your head this direction, please. Hair is evenly distributed. Um, no flakiness. I'm noting that there are no, um, no, um, no abnormal, no abnormalities in the texture of the scalp. No lumps. Um, was there any tenderness while I was pressing on there? And no lesions. I'm gonna um, move down. I'm gonna palpate your sinuses. Okay. Tell me if there's any tenderness in here. No. Okay. Any tenderness here? No. Okay. Um, no tenderness in sinuses. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Evaluate your cranial nerves, and I'm going to just start from one and go through. That way, it'll be easier to go through them. Do you have any uh, issues with your smell? No, I smell just fine right now. Yeah. Can you, if you go into a coffee shop, you can tell that there's coffee being brewed. If you go into a flower shop, definitely, definitely. you can tell that there's flowers present. For sure. Okay. Um, how about your vision? 21. You've been um, Very well reported. Okay, um, cranial nerves three, four, and six. We're gonna start with your eyes, okay? All right. I'm gonna shine a light in there. Okay. Actually, before I start with the eyes, I'm gonna inspect the external structures of your eyes, and they're symmetric. Um, eyes are uh, white, um, pink, um, conjunctiva. Um, I'm gonna shine a light into your eyes, okay? Pupils are equal, they're both round, they both react to light. Can you look at this uh, coffee pot behind me here? Now we take a look at this. Eyes accommodate appropriately. Now follow my pin light here. There's nystagmus only at the periphery, which is a normal finding. Um, so that's cranial nerves three, four, and six. Cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve. The way that we're going to assess for that is I'm going to put my hands on both sides of your jaw. Can you open and close your jaw? No clicking, no crepitus, temporomandibular uh, joint is um, intact. Now can you clinch that, those jaw for me? Um, jaw muscles are symmetric and strong. I'm going to push down on your chin. I cannot open his jaw um, and I'm going to, let me, close your eyes and let me know where I'm touching you. Left cheek, right eyebrow. Left chin, right chin, right cheek, left eye. Okay, so cranial nerve five is intact. 
Um, can you scrunch, we are already down six, can you scrunch your face up for me? Can you smile for me? Can you puff your cheeks out? Okay, all those motions were symmetric bilaterally. Uh, cranial nerve seven is intact. My, our Anthony. <laughs> Anthony yeah. is his middle name. Yes. <laughs> so he passed the whisper test, and that means that cranial nerve eight is intact. Um, now, I'm going to come over here and grab a tongue depressor. I do want to go over your nose first, though, okay? So, um, Mike's nose uh, is asymmetric. It's slightly more bulbous on the right side. Is that I've because you've had a nose. history of a yeah. broken nose? Uh -huh. Okay, and I'm going to look up in your nose there, Mike. And there's no significant redness. Is there any tenderness in your nose? No. No significant redness, no uh, tenderness. There's not um, excess drainage coming from his nostrils. And now we'll go into your mouth, okay? Lips uh, look moist, and um, his mouth looks symmetric. Looking on the inside of his mouth, it's moist and pink. Roof of the mouth is white with rugae. I'm gonna. Press down ah. on your tongue, say ah for me. Uvula raises appropriately. That tells me that cranial nerve 9 is intact. Can you stick your tongue out for me? Tongue sticks out midline with no uh, tremors. That We're going to jump ahead and say that cranial nerve 12 is intact. He has one missing tooth on the top right of his uh, mouth. Um, is that causing you any pain? Uh, not too bad, no. Sometimes you have pain as it does in the morning, yeah. What do you do about that? Uh, just rinse my mouth with some salt water, the doctor said, and I'll be all right. Good, that's what I would have told you to do too. Rinse your mouth after every you meal. After every meal, brush your teeth, rinse your mouth with salt water, and uh, maybe you can get to a dentist as soon as you can. As soon as possible, I'll be on that. Okay, and then one more thing, I'm going to test you gag reflex. Okay, gag reflex, which means cranial nerve 10 is intact. Now, I'm going to um, put my hands on both sides of your face and ask you to turn your head to the right against resistance, turn your head to the left against resistance. Can you shrug your shoulders against resistance? Um, all those movements were symmetric bilaterally. That shows cranial nerve 11 is intact. So all uh, 12 cranial nerves are intact. Um, we've gone over the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and I'm going to do your ears. Um, inspecting the external structure of the ears. Um, let me see this side. Ex external structures of the ears are uh, no redness noted. Any tenderness? No. No tenderness noted. Now I'm going to, um, oh, we got that nice thing at that other place that we're looking at. Um, so, um, inspecting the Pulling up and back on an adult patient and inspecting the internal ear. There's no uh, redness noted on the right. There's no excess cerumen noted. Today we had a nice um, otometer. Uh, I think that's what it's called. And, and Mike did have um, pearl colored eardrums that weren't bulging. Uh, which is significant. It shows no signs for infection. So eyes, ears, mouth, nose. Now I'm going to palpate uh, Mike for um, lumps, tenderness, uh, for his lymph nodes. I'm going to start in front of his ears with the pre-auricular lymph nodes. While I'm here, I'm also going to note the, I know what I'm doing, that Mike is um, has a temporal pulse, and uh, I'm not noting any lumps in his pre- or post-auricular uh, lymph node areas. I'm palpating the um, cervical lymph node, submandibular lymph nodes, noting that his trachea at this time is uh, midline. And um, are you having any tenderness in these areas? I'm going to reach in his shirt here, just in the essence of saving time, to palpate um, no lumps in his axillary lymph node areas. 
Okay, so if you could pop your shirt off, that'd be great. Uh, let's take that one off too. Um, okay, I'm going to step around to the back of Mike and I'm going to assess his back and let me see how back. Okay, so looking at Mike's back, skin inspecting Mike's back, skin tone is even. Um, barely any hair, but it is evenly distributed. There's no uh, lesions. He does have a sore up on his um, right shoulder. What's that from? Oh, that's probably the zip. Okay. Um, nice muscle structure. It's uh, symmetric bilaterally. I'm going to palpate now for any um, any lumps. Is there any tenderness while I'm doing this, Mike? No, it feels kind of good. Okay, there's no lumps. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, well, I'll percuss last, I guess, just to do it in order. But there are no noted lumps, no tenderness. Can you put your chin to your chest, Mike, and then bend forward for me? Now, if I look at that, I notice that Mike's uh, spine is um, in line, no curvature of the spine. Uh, I'm gonna listen. So I'm gonna take a listen to uh, Mike's lung sounds from the back. Mike, I'm gonna ask you to take a deep breath through your mouth, bigger than you than you would usually. And then every time I move the stethoscope around, take another deep breath for me. If you start getting dizzy, let me know and we'll stop. Okay. Okay. Deep breath. Okay. Mike's, um, there's no adventitious lung sounds in the back for Mike. I'm going to come around the front and I'm going to kind of do the same stuff again. Um, <clears throat> Mike's skin tone in the front is um, even. I wish we had a light over here. Skin tone in the front is even. Hair is evenly distributed. Go ahead and just sit normal. Um, no lesions noted. Um, I'll palpate for any uh, lumps. Did you know, Mike, that um, men can get breast cancer? I, I didn't know, yeah. You didn't know that? But I don't know how I check for much. So you would kind of check just like I'm doing right here, I guess. Well, I know how to do it for a woman, and I imagine it would be the same. You'd go in like clock. Uh, you'd go and spiral from the inward out, check it for lumps, make sure you're checking up into your um, axillary, armpit area. But I noticed the no lumps. Um, I'm going to listen to Mike's lung sounds from the front now. Actually, I'm going to take a deep breath and hold it for me. Okay, go ahead and let it out. And then one more time. Okay, so I'm not hearing any thrills in Mike's uh, jugular veins. And deep breath. Okay, no adventitious sounds, listening to, uh, listening to Mike's lungs. Now I'm going to um, listen to Mike's heart. And I will start with the second intercostal space to listen to Mike's aortic valve. On the, um, and then I'm going to go to the second intercostal space, sternal border to listen to Mike's pulmonic valve. Third, intercostal space, sternal border for herbs point. Fourth, intercostal space, sternal border for the tricuspid valve. Fifth, intercostal space, midclavicular line for the apex of the heart, which is also the mitral valve. At this point um, is where the loudest, uh, loudest sound I hear is the S1. Okay, now you should always um, 
you should always auscultate for a full minute if you're going to take a pulse from the apical pulse in the interest of time uh, for the for this uh, project I did for 15 seconds and his pulse rate uh, was 82 um, and it had a regular rhythm um, at this point Mike can I have you lay down and like grab this backpack and we can use that as a pillow and this is going to be tough. I'm going to ask you to roll to your side while I'm listening to Mike's apical uh, pulse. Okay, go ahead and turn. I'll hold on. Just relax. I don't hear any rubs <coughs> at the apex of the heart. Um, I'm going to go through all those uh, points again with the bell side of the stethoscope. Um, second in the cost of space, uh, so order. The bell side of the stethoscope uh, would be help uh, a practitioner to discern if there are any murmurs that are harder to hear. No um, significant um, or unusual sounds with Mike's um, heart there. I'm going to use the bell while I'm at it to auscultate if I can hear an abdominal aortic uh, brewing. And I am not hearing that. Now I'm going to inspect Mike's uh, abdomen. Shining a light from the back of the abdomen. I do note that Mike has a, a rise here. This rib kind of sticks out more than others. In, in our history, we uh, Mike's reported that a doctor just told him that that's normal for him. He said it's a floating rib, which uh, the bottom two are floating. We all have floating ribs, but his is sticking out for some reason. I do notice a pulsation. Mike's a slim guy. He does have a muscular build, but I can <laughs> see the pulsation of his abdominal aorta. But other than that, I see no um, no abnormalities with his abdomen. His umbilicus is um, an any, and it's not dry, nor is it red. Um, now, to go out of order, for the abdomen because you don't want to push it around and then listen for bowel sounds. I'm going to start an auscultate. Do you need help? No. Do you need to take a second to get comfortable with it? Okay. I'm going to auscultate the four um, quadrants for bowel sounds. Mike's having uh, what I would consider normal um, bowel sounds. Um, they're not hyper. There's no tinkling going on. Um, and now I'm going to palpate for uh, lungs. Tell me if uh, you have any, if I'm pushing too hard. I'm just going to palpate lightly the first time around. Looking for any, um, any bulges. Lumps, any sort of masses, not finding anything. Um, was that okay? Did that hurt? No, that's good. Okay, and I'm, now I'm going to palpate a little bit deeper. Attention, if you are the ninth round, you have 45. If any hours, no shelter is expected in any and no restrooms may be found. Not noting any, um, no tenderness, and I'm not noting any masses of any sort in his abdomen. And now I'm going to percuss um, for either tympany or dullness, looking for tympany because dullness would show, you wouldn't call it impaction right away just because there was dullness, but it could be a mass of some sort. 
and there was tympanic sounds all the way around. Um, I'm gonna I'm going to palpate for the liver. Uh, the way that we do this is support hand on the bottom, and then when Mike takes a deep breath, the liver could bump my fingers, but it didn't. So when he exhales, I go up for a little bit. Try and breathe just in your chest, not in your stomach. Can't do that. There you go. One more. I'm going to say Mike's liver is not palpable. I'm going to palpate um, for Mike's kidneys with the duck bill. And then reach over. Kidneys are not palpable and spleen is not palpable. Um, do you need to adjust yourself? You okay? Um, okay, so I'm going to pull up your pants a little bit, Mike. Take a look at lower extremities. Um, pressing on Mike's legs and feet. I know no edema. Um, hair is evenly distributed. Um, um, I'm going to really have to kind of reach up your pant leg. Here. That's okay. Oh, you got it? Cool. Don't want these too tight on there. Um, I'm going to palpate Mike's pulses. This is the popliteal pulse. Are you relaxed? Popliteal pulse, uh, two plus. Um, Peter pulse. Two plus, bounding, regular rhythm, plus tibial pulses are bounding, all pulses are um, equally strong bilaterally, no swelling, no edema, um, hair is evenly distributed, skin um, even colored. Now I'm going to hold down your leg, can you lift your leg up? Very good. Lift this leg up. Okay, leg, uh, lower extremities are uh, equally strong bilaterally. I'm going to do some range of motion testing here. Any pain? Does that cause any pain? No? Do some range of motion testing here. No pain there? Very good. Um, range of motion is good. Um, I'm going to use a Q-tip here, and I'm going to ask that you can either tell me if I'm touching your foot or leg with the soft side or the sharp side, okay? So go ahead and just relax. Soft. Hard. Soft. Hard. Okay. I'm going to write a number on your hand. Six or nine. Six or nine. And I'm going to write a number on this hand here. Seven. Seven. Um, and I think that that does it for the laying down. If you don't mind, go ahead and sit up again on the side of the table here. And let's do... <coughs> let's do this one. Remember this one? And you don't have to do it. You can't do it with me. If you're that coordinated, good job. And finger to finger. Oh yeah, these ones. Finger to finger. Thank you. And finger to nose. Close your eyes, touch my nose. Okay. Um, so, um, what else do we got when we're sitting up again? Oh, okay. I do not have a reflex hammer. I couldn't come across a reflex hammer, but I'm going to go through the motions anyways. Um, if you could just grab onto my arm here and relax this arm. Is this arm relaxed? It's pretty relaxed, yeah. Okay. Okay, and relax this arm here, please. I'm checking for deep tendon reflexes. Um... So pr probably one plus, except for that's probably more to do with me uh, needing practice and a reflex hammer than Mike's reflexes.
Okay. And we'll form back here. You relax. Okay. And then these two down here. That was a good one, huh? I'm going to say one plus on those. Uh, usually they're pretty. Much lower than usually. Well, I don't have a reflex hammer. I'm going for that. Okay, two plus on those. Now, um, I'm going to ask you to hit your feet, walk towards the camera with your normal uh, stride, and then when you turn around, we're going to ask you to do uh, heel to toe. Uh oh. This on a sobriety test. <laughs> Maybe I need one of those. Yeah, and then you can come here. Uh, if you stand facing me with your feet together, eyes closed. Okay, we're going to do this just for a few seconds. He's not exhibiting any swaying, uh, so that's negative for a wrong bird, wrong bird sign. And um, that's it. Oh, one more thing, okay, Mike's reminded me, we've been through this a lot together, is, um, yep. <laughs> yep. That's it. Sorry.